Hey, it's Talgrim. That's me skipping rope on the left of your frame, and today I want to share with you one of my real-life passions. This is Muay Thai, or Thai kickboxing, and I captured some sparring footage from yesterday. I actually recorded three different days of sparring over the past eight days with an eye of trying to take a look at my technique and identify you know, easily correctable areas. It's actually, it's nice. Even just in eight days, I was able to make some pretty meaningful improvements um, from watching some of my bad habits. So I, obviously, right off the bat, conditioning is an issue. I'm still working myself uh, getting into shape. Um, but I noticed from the prior two sparring days that I was dropping my hands a little bit too low, which I'm still doing here at times, um, and also not keeping my chin tucked, uh, which is trying to make it a smaller target. Now, Muay Thai is pretty famous because, you know, it's called eight-point striking, so you can strike with your fists, with your feet, so those are four points, and then with either knee and then with your elbows. Now, in light sparring, we don't throw elbows because those are really damaging and easily break someone's nose or cut them open or concuss them and then um, generally speaking you don't throw straight knees either for the simple reason that they can usually crack ribs when you land because there's so much weight behind the bone of the the knees and the elbows um, you'll see guys who are preparing for a fight or doing clinch drills um, doing you know knees to the body generally it's in a very controlled fashion just working on technique uh, but in this case here you know, none of us are training for, for fights, or at least in my case, you know, I'm, I'm just doing this light sparring, both from a conditioning standpoint and also just to work on my technique. So actually, you know, it's interesting, I got into Muay Thai because I always wanted to do a martial art growing up. And in college, you know, I went to a few classes, but I couldn't really find anything that resonated with me with the traditional martial arts. And I didn't know about Muay Thai at the time. And then about 10 years ago, a guy in my World of Warcraft uh, raiding guild, this guy named Infamous X, he told me to check out mixed martial arts on YouTube and to search for Hoist Gracie, the early UFC stuff, and Fedor Emelianenko. And so I did that, and what I quickly noticed is that the most consistent or damaging form of striking was from Muay Thai. Uh, and it's Muay Thai is, it's very, it, it works very much in, in real life because it's easy to land leg kicks and knees and elbows. Uh, it does lots of damage, and you know, if, like my favorite strike from Muay Thai is the right low leg kick, or the right, that right there. So, you know, if you've watched UFC, you've seen guys doing that, and it's amazing, like, you know, even with the shin guards, you can still feel the pressure when a, a leg kick lands. And, you know, if I weren't wearing a shin guard and I'm kicking an opponent there, it's like swinging a baseball bat at their leg. It's it's super damaging. Um, like I said, if you've watched mixed martial arts and you've seen people getting leg kicked, you'll see, like, their front leg on the outside going to get bruised and swollen up. Like, it's pretty nasty stuff. It definitely in inhibits your mobility. Uh, it <laughs> doesn't feel so good either. But, you know, obviously here, we're in this light sparring here, um, this is mostly for technique. We're not trying to wail on each other. We're trying to do it in a controlled way. Gabe just caught me with a nice left uh, body hook uh, to the body right right around the kidney area. just like took the wind out of me. Um, but that guy's he's really good. Uh, he's got really good footwork. He's very fast and uh, he comes from a traditional martial arts background. I think he knows um, uh, Taekwondo. So he knows like he did like a few um, like kind of jump kicks or forward kicks, which is a traditional martial arts, not Muay Thai per se. What's interesting with Muay Thai is that you know there isn't a belt system, so you don't have black belts, white belts, etc. Uh, but it's like when you're, you know, working out with people at the gym, partnering up with them, or doing something like sparring, especially sparring, within the first minute, you can very easily tell or discern differences in terms of skill, level, and experience. And so, and to some extent, belts aren't needed. You know, you can kind of, you know, when you're working out with people and you're watching them, you can tell how good they are. And, you know, obviously, aside from skill and experience level, there's also, uh, you know, attributes such as, you know, size and then and weight. So, you know, What's nice about a good gym like this, this is Rise Combat Sports in San Francisco, is that the people are really uh, very chill or, or cool about sparring. You know, we're not out here to, to wail on each other and hurt or injure each other. Uh, we're here to work on our technique and have fun and, and get a good workout. And so, like in this case here, I'm sparring with Alex, and I've probably got a good four or five inches of height on her and you know, probably over 30 pounds of weight. So, you know, uh, I don't, I don't want to, you know, bully her. That would be kind of useless for both of us. Uh, and she's good. You know, she's, she's a pretty good athlete. Uh, very quick as a good good uh, right low kick and so you know this is this is fun for, for both of us to practice and what's what was fun about yesterday so I have sparred three times in the last week and you know brought a, a tripod to record this footage on my galaxy phone which has been great because uh, part of the reason why I, I didn't actually know what it looked like when I'm sparring and certainly uh, my conditioning is still a work in progress I'm still getting into shape uh, but I was able to pick up on some uh, very easily correctable bad habits, and some of them I'm still doing here, but just keeping my hands too low. So it, it, it's funny, against like shorter opponents, like most people who weigh my weight are shorter than me, and so I can kind of range range them and strafe them and you know play keep away, just using my length. Uh, but some of the bad habits that I picked up, like keeping my hands too low, doesn't work against people who have the same reach as me or are, or are bigger or longer. 
Uh, and so there's other things too, like it's important to kind of keep your chin tucked to make it a small target to make sure to cover up well. And so it's, it's been really gratifying to see, you know, just even in a week's time, um, improvements I was able to make after watching the footage. And, you know, I've talked about that a lot. You know, this is a gaming channel and it's really helpful to watch yourself play, especially in player versus player combat, to see some of your habits and mistakes and missed opportunities, um, you know, especially in games like the World of Tanks, which is very both strategic and tactical. And there's a lot of decision making. Um, it's the same way with sparring. You know, you, you work out with people different builds, different um, preferred techniques, uh, different attributes, different speed levels, etc. And so you have to kind of constantly assess, you know, what your opponent is doing, what you're going to be able to do back to them. And so, you know, I, I was able to spark against a whole bunch of uh, different people yesterday. Actually, it was really cool. Like this guy here, um, Gene, actually never sparred with him before. And he's, I think, about like probably an, uh, an inch or two taller than me and a little bit longer. And so he's a guy that I can't use, you know, reach advantage on. Um, and he's actually as fast as I am too, so I don't have a speed advantage either. And so it's you know it's a good experience, kind of practicing how to get inside, defend myself, make sure to get inside, get some clean strikes. And there's a number of things that I've been working on. So one is making sure to be able to, to punch to the body more and work the teeth kicks, like where that's the front uh, body kick used to kind of push opponents away, and it saps a little bit of, the, of their energy too. And then the other thing I've been trying to work on is switching to southpaw. So that's you know having your right foot forward, and you know basically having your your power leg and your power hand forward and just to change uh, the angle of it uh, but this guy's you know I talked to him afterwards and he's been doing Muay Thai uh, for multiple years and sparred quite a bit so he's he's got very clean technique notice he's he's very um, he's good about protecting his face and again that that's a big you know area of emphasis for me I got to continue to make sure that right there like that I'm holding my gloves up high enough uh, and part of it's part of it's a fitness issue you know I'm just not not in great shape yet I'm getting there and you know it's like one of those things in any sport you know if you get gas your technique suffers your speed suffers reaction time you know so but you know there, there are things that I can do like right there I can I can, I can parry that teep kick you know that's just doing it with my left hand after he kicked just to remind myself to do that and part of what you know a big part of Muay Thai what's so cool about it is it's not just great physical exercise you use your whole body it's really good core strength and then things like sparring um, you know, it's very mentally engaging too, and you got to kind of watch what people's habits are. Yeah, this is it, we're we're pretty evenly evenly matched here. Um, yeah, there's right there's southpaw kind of getting that right foot forward. I actually need to start working on it more because uh, I've talked to people and it and it, it's confusing to folks who aren't using used to fighting southpaw. So right there, I did a switch to southpaw and then nice you know head body with the right hand kind of alternating some different combinations here. And then also right here, like when he throws that jab, I was expecting that duck under, slip to the left, and then throw the right leg kick. So trying to work on the timing too. What's so interesting to me is to watch people who are really experienced and adept at sparring. They'll be able to block pretty much anything you throw at them or slip it just by like an inch or two. Like usually if people are throwing at me and I need to block, I exaggerate the block or if I'm trying to slip it, I exaggerate the slip. And part of it is, you know, there's like a natural human reaction when people are throwing at you is to cover up, duck your head, uh, back straight away. And those are all actually terribly unhelp unhelpful things to do. Um, pretty much the, the things that you would naturally do from a, like a fear reaction are all wrong. So for example, you know, if someone's rushing you, you should actually kind of cover up and you know, jam them. So come closer, not, not back up in a straight line. And then you know, things like you know, keeping, keeping your chin tucked, because I have a tendency to kind of lean back, keep my head away. Uh, but that's actually not, not proper technique. I should be tucking the chin and then use, keeping my hands up higher than I am. I, I know I'm tired, but still, still not good. Um, but you know, it's, it's really good exercise. And the thing that I didn't realize either uh, with the Muay Thai, because you throw so many uh, kicks and knees, those are all the powers all being generated from your hips and from your core. So do you end up getting uh, tremendous core strength, and a lot of the traditional striking disciplines. This is true. You know, you'll see, you see guys, you know, boxers just do insane amount of sit-ups and ab work. And partly it's to strengthen your core so you can take a punch. Um, and then part of it's for generating power, especially in Muay Thai. There's so much hip rotation in the strikes that you throw, so you know, having that super helpful. And then you know, sparring this with this guy's really helpful because he's he's got better technique than me. He's also uh, taller and, and a lot bigger. Um, and so, you know, I need to kind of work on the, the quickness game with him and counter. And he's got good hands too. You'll, you'll see this. His boxing skills are a lot more crisp than mine. So you know, what I've been trying to do is work some leg kicks. I had a nice three, three kick combo, like one left inside kick followed by two quick rights. Um, you can see there's just a, a pretty significant difference in terms of, you know, the weight when he throws. But that right there is a good, nice, clean right uh, leg kick onto his, his shin. And then, see, like, he's kind of flicking around my guard. That was a good combination there when, when body head and then... Uh, Right, left, uh, right leg kick, 
with a southpaw stance. If you guys do uh, traditional martial arts or, or Mai Tai sparring, um, it's, if, you, if you guys have any videos posted, I've sent it to me. I, it's fun to watch people spar. It's such an interesting thing, especially when you watch like each of these people that I'm sparring against has different attributes, right? This guy's very good with his hands, and he's got um, he's got strong kicks, but they're they're slower. So the, the hands are the real danger here. Uh, and again, you know, he's as long as I am, and probably a little bit taller. So you know, I can't expect to use a reach advantage and work working on it. What I really appreciate, you know, about Muay Thai, um, the, the people tend to be pretty chill and, and cool. Um, it's it's interesting. Like uh, one of the instructors at our gym is a pro fighter. Um, I didn't see his pro fight, but people were telling me, you know, and it was like a five round fight, and he'd so beat up on the guy the first three rounds, where it was clearly technically better. They kind of went easier on him in the last two rounds, and I asked why, and they said that's just that's part of the mentality of the culture. If you're already clearly better, you don't have to knock the other guy out. I mean, obviously, uh, in in some fights, you know, there's lots of reasons why you would want to do that, but. Um, the Muay Thai community, especially the gym that I'm at, it, it, the people are really cool and they're, they're good. You know, like, we're, like I said, we're not out here to hurt or injure each other. We're here to work on our technique, uh, you know, and have fun. And I love doing this. It's it's so interesting pairing up with, with different people. This guy, um, he actually caught me with a Superman punch, um, punch with the left, the left hand, which is a little bit unusual. Um, and then right there, <laughs> this is so funny. So you notice, like, I don't just have shin guards. I'm wearing knee pads, too. Uh, that time the kick went straight through our shins. I kicked him in the knee and actually could feel it on my shin bone. Um, you know, it's funny. People talk about conditioning your shins, which means if you if you kick enough, you build up enough bone density and you deaden the nerves, it doesn't hurt much. I like people have said that, and I've been doing Muay Thai for years, and I still feel stuff. Now, obviously, again, we're we're wearing these shin guards, and that's designed to both protect the person being kicked as well as the the person kicking. Um, you know, and I'm using, in terms of gear, um, Hayabusa, so I've tried a number of different, uh, I've tried a couple different shin guards and ones I borrowed from the gym, as well as, I think this is the fourth pair of gloves that I've owned. Uh, I definitely want to say Hayabusa stuff, I, I believe, is, is the best um, value if you're willing to spend a little bit more money. Um, the gloves have superb wrist support, and then these shin guards, you notice they'll flare out on the outsides of the knees, which also kind of protects the outsides, and um, they have a double... Um, uh, kind of fold back a velcro system on the shin guard so they don't slip much. My, my prior shin guards from fightingsports.com uh, used to slip a lot. It was super annoying. And then this guy I'm sparring here, uh, Michael, he, this is his third day of trying out sparring. So, you know, he's still pretty new to Muay Thai and, and definitely new to sparring. And so, you know, this is my warm up round, but I'm also kind of going easy on him. And, and part of it's just to kind of work on him, help him get his technique and timing down, and then show him. By where, like right there, he threw a nice right leg kick. He timed it because I had my left foot down with weight on it. Um, but just to you know, kind of show him where he's making himself vulnerable and help him learn how to properly defend. That's the thing about sparring. That I was the, when I was first sparring, you know, years ago, my my intent or thinking was to make sure to land. Like right there, I landed two straight leg kicks. I told him to block it. So there, he, he checked the, the third one. Um, but you know the most important thing actually when you're learning to spar is learning not to take damage and learning how to block you know block and then once you get that down then you can start working on working on your offense. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this and thanks for watching. Take care.